Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. After months of anticipation, Valamore is finally out. And judging by my previous video, I can tell that a ton of you were also super excited for it, as no video has ever performed like that on my channel. So, if you checked it out, I am super grateful for your support. If you want to know all the requirements for every activity in the area, go ahead and watch that video first, because today, I will show you the basics of every single activity, so you don't fumble around like I did after an almost 12-hour streaming session. The only disclaimer I have for you today is that if you think this video doesn't cover something important, don't worry, because I plan on doing dedicated guides for every activity we talk about today, along an updated 1-99 to Hunter guide. After the intro, the entire video is going to be unscripted to give you my thoughts, so with that out of the way, let's dive right in. Alright fellas, the very first thing we're going to talk about are quests, because number one, they're pretty quick. Number two, I don't really want to spoil the uh, lore and the storyline behind any of them. And most importantly, because you don't really need any quests to explore around. However, some of them are going to be important for the activities that we're going to talk about in a few minutes. The very first one that you're going to be prompted to, maybe you're going to be suggested to complete, is called The Twilight's Promise. And it gives you more lore behind what happened in Children of the Sun. It is really fun, it gives you a lot of context behind what's going on, about the races, the religion, and everything in Valamore. And if you are a lore hound, this is definitely one that you do not want to miss. Next one, we have Perilous Moons, which I was pronouncing incorrectly in my previous video. And this is basically the tutorial behind the activity with the same name, Perilous Moons. It not only shows you the ropes of the activity, but, but also tells you why you need to go in there, like why the area, which is called Kemptorum, like, you know, is kind of protected by the dwarves. And overall, this entire area is just, like, insane. I was super happy to see, like, everything inside. And uh, you're going to be exploring the areas in which you're going to be fighting the uh, Naguas, which is super, super exciting. Next one, we have a quest called a uh, At First Light, I'm sorry, and this is basically the base, <laughs> the basics. This is the, this is going to show you the ropes of Hunter Contracts, and it's also going to have a couple of interesting uh, things in the quest for you to do, and also interacting with some of the new creatures that you will be able to find in Valamore. Not all of them, but some of them, which is actually pretty nice. I recommend you do this one ASAP, because I am having a lot of fun with the Hunter Contracts, uh, other than the Fortis Coliseum, which we will talk about. Uh, but those are the three most important ones. Now, why I said the three most important ones, there is a quest called The Riveting Tale of Lilypad Labor Dispute. That's a mouthful. And I don't really know what that quest aims for. It's basically like the Cold War. You talk about the penguins, like you, they want to rule the world. And this one is about frogs. It's kind of funny, but again, I don't really know why it's there. They could have easily skipped this one, but maybe they just wanted to add something, something new. Uh, related to lore, not really questing, what's important is that, as you know, to get to Valamore, you need to go to... You, you need to go east of a rock. You land there, and then the Quetzals are going to be your transportation system. And you... While you do not need, um, you know, the quest to, like, use them, you definitely need more things to unlock them, because you're gonna need to build the spots for you to go from place to place. Okay, so I'm gonna do the opposite of what I did in my previous video, and we're gonna go from most to quote-unquote least hype. We're gonna start with the Fortis Coliseum. For those of you who do not know this, what is this? This is a new wave-based system, which is is going to give us the new best in slot ranged cape, so rest in peace, uh, Avas Assembler. And let me tell you, first of all, Hardcore Ironman, this is a dangerous death, unlike the Fight Caves, the Inferno, maybe something like Chambers, but a new wave base uh, system. If you perish here, your status is going to be revoked. Now, what is this? What is the important part about this is that at the beginning, it is a lot more difficult. I mean, of course, the first like one to four waves are not that bad. But then the difficulty ramps up so hard. Like, I don't think I have seen anything ever that has this steep of a learning curve and difficulty in the entire game. Like, I know we're playing a point-and-click medieval game made in Java from 20 years ago. But, man, from literally everything I've done in the game in the past almost like six years, I have never seen a difficulty spike this, this harsh. Which is good, because that means that if people want to take it to the absolute limit, it is going to be the content to do if you want to brag about your glory. Now, important to mention, if you are if you are going to do this, it's definitely going to be for the Quiver, or if you want to get some of the Collection Log slots, you only need to do 12 waves for this. On stream, someone said you need to do like 36 waves or something, and I was planking at wave 3, and I was really worried. So, um, right now my PB is wave 7. There are a couple of extremely good players in our community that have PB that like wave 9, wave 10, and at the time of recording this video, some of the best players that you can see on Twitch, on YouTube, are 
look are getting to the final boss a little more consistently, but so far there are no completions yet. What is extremely interesting is the invocation system, what I will call it, because I think officially it's called the handicap system or the uh, the mechanics that you can start, that you can select at the beginning of the wave. What I said in my previous video is that maybe you could get some positive ones, but let me tell you, every single one of them are going to give you hell. They're all extremely difficult and it's basically pick your poison and I cannot wait to see what is the like most useful one, like which one you definitely don't want to go for and just wait for my Fortis Colosseum guide to maybe not give you the 100% best strategy but definitely as many tips I can give you so you can get your very first quiver. I cannot wait to get a lot better at this because let me tell you, feeling like a noob again is both frustrating and exciting but yeah, there were a lot of tears shed on stream. So Fortis Colosseum, definitely the thing to do if you want to call yourself a true gamer. Next we have the Perilous Moons and I'm gonna start by saying something quick. If you're an endgame player, you do not need to interact with any of the activities inside like Hunter, Fishing, killing uh, like the little enemies that you have, like catching mods and everything. This is definitely going to be something that either mid-level players or Ironmen can grab in order to make their own supplies so you don't have to spend a lot of money on it. And the fights themselves are really, really cool. First of all, the enemies are super flashy, the rooms are nice. If I could give Jagex, if any JMod is watching this, please make the make the red room a little less red because I was going through like a migraine scare during stream and let me tell you the red on my screen did not help one bit. The For some odd reason the corrupted gauntlet either with 117 HD on or off doesn't really hurt my vision that much but if you have difficulty or if you have any vision problems uh, please let me know what you think of the red room because it definitely put a lot of strain in my eyes. Um, other than that, this is my only complaint. The fights are super cool and engaging, and you need to do something like literally, like there's just no time to rest. If Scurrious was a good introduction for, I would say, like early game PVMing, Perilous Moons are incredible for you to try to creep out of the mid game PVMing. You're gonna learn a lot about movement, a lot about like maybe like like moving around, standing in a specific spot to do damage, and the Eclipse Moon boss actually has a really cool mechanic where you have to like where you don't have to look away from it otherwise it's going to deal massive damage and this activity seems re seems really really cool and what's most exciting about it is that after you kill all three of them then i'm guessing you will have your chance to get any of the pieces from the blood moon set the uh blood rager set and the eclipse set if i'm if i have those correctly from a previous video and i Definitely think this is going to be a great death, uh, great death, sorry, I just read something on the script. This is going to be a great activity for me to, or for everyone to green log, because it's not really that difficult. And, uh, you know, as, uh, as well, just like the previous one, Hardcore Ironman Beware, because this is definitely going to take your status off. And, yeah, uh, this one is not as difficult as the Colosseum, definitely. But Perilous Moons, it doesn't look like it's going to be that difficult to green log. And I just cannot wait to do this with uh, you guys on stream, when I get footage for my guide. I'm a huge fan of this area, as well as the Camp Torum that you need to go to in order to access the Perilous Moons. After you're done with a quest called At First to Light, you're gonna unlock Hunter Contracts. And let me tell you, out of all of the things I did today, nothing brought more joy to me than this one. Now, not the Hunter Contract itself, not the quest, not the area, but you know what? When I went to every single Hunter area that I needed to catch something from, from the contracts that I did on stream, there was not a single spot that was just empty. Everyone was catching something and it just basically brought new life to the hunter skill and it's just like, it basically is here to stay as the backbone of hunter training if you want to get uh, more experience and of course extremely, extremely cool rewards. Uh, mainly a uh, hunter outfit that actually works. When you go to the hunter guild, you go downstairs and there are going to be four tiers of hunter guild masters that you can talk to in order to get a task. You have the novice ones, you have adept, experienced, and master. I went for one of each, and when I make my guide on this, I'm, I believe I'm gonna do one hour or 30 minutes of each to see the approximate experience per hour that you can get. And they are going to give you uh, hunter looting bags, or just basically resources that you can get. And apparently this is where you get the Quetzal Whistle from, that you can also get from the advanced and perfected, so you can have many teleports for your Quetzal Whistle to you, for you to teleport around Valamor. And now for the training methods. Let's jump into mining. The very first thing is that you will need 
partial completion of the Perilous Moons quest, because that gives you access to Camp Torum, where this activity is located. I'm not really sure if you need to complete a quest for you to bank, for you to do something important, to use an anvil, but important to know that you need partial completion of that quest for you to enter. You're gonna go to the city, head east, and then you're going to see the mining spots right away, which are going to be in the wall, or on the wall. When you see waterfall running down these mining spots, these mining veins, you're basically going to be mining blessed bone shards at a much uh, faster rate, and it's basically going to give you more experience per hour, or you could just AFK any of them. The interesting part about it is that I, uh, what I saw on stream, is that you can get bigger bone chunks that you, if you use on an anvil, you're gonna get teleporting mods, or I don't know what they're called, like fossilized moth, that are going to be a direct teleport to Camptorum, which is going to be absolutely insane, especially for Perilous Moons. So if you're looking for a decently AFK training method for mining, this will definitely be it. And I think it's going to be a little better or maybe on par with the Motherload mine, because that place requires a few more clicks. And let me tell you, it's not as AFK as people make it out to be. The activity that definitely like maybe confused me a little bit was a prayer one. What you're gonna do is basically grab as many bone, like bless the bone shards as you can, buy a couple of wines of, uh, sorry, not wines of jug, jugs of wine, take them to this spot right here on the map, like a little pyramid, that is going to bless your jugs, and then you're gonna go northeast into this building, and then you're gonna fill the libation pool with the wine. When you do that, you are going to offer the bone shards to the pool, and you're gonna, I mean, from what I saw, you're going to offer in chunks of 100, which is going to give you a decent experience per hour, or, you know, for every bone, which, like I said in my video, it looks like it's going to be a budget training method for prayer, it's definitely not going to be great, but it's something you can basically do at an extremely low cost, especially because it needs jugs of wine. Finally, the one for thieving is extremely, I mean, I would say, interesting, impressive. I liked it a lot because, number one, if you steal from wealthy uh, citizens in the bazaar, it's going to... I mean, it's not... It, it doesn't have a crazy high failure rate, like I said in the video. You're gonna have, like, normal uh, pickpocketing rates as, like, maybe... Uh, I don't know if a master farmer... It's definitely not 99, but it's not... So it's not as difficult as buyers or elves, but it's not as easy as, like, maybe something that you can steal from a 100% uh, catch rate. So when a kid lures one of the wealthy citizens, it is going to, like, distract them for a few seconds, probably anywhere between 20, 30, 40, I want to say, and you can auto pickpocket -pick -pick for the duration. You're gonna pick, you're gonna get some keys from some of these pickpockets, and what you can do is that you can go to the western part of the bazaar, where you're gonna find a couple of houses, and you need to go to the one that's empty, you go in, and then you steal from a chest that people are, you know, just stealing from, or just like a half-empty chest. When the wealthy citizen is coming into the house, you need to go out for, like, by a window. I only did this once, as you can see in the, in the video. And when you have all of your loot, you go back to the bazaar, and then northwest, there's, a, like, a, like, a, like, a shady character or something you talk to, and that is who you sell your valuable loot to. That's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and let me know in the comments below what you are most excited about Valamor, even though that wasn't the previous uh, video, maybe. But let me know also, if you want, to tell me what activities you did on the release date and if you like them or not. If you include the term RSN in your comment, as well as leave me your, your, YouTube, no, your RuneScape username on it, you will be entered in our weekly bond giveaway, and I will pick a winner tomorrow, because this video is coming out on Thursday. I want to give a massive thank you to every single person that has supported this channel so far. Your monetary pledge goes a long way for my starving family in a third world country, and I cannot thank you guys enough for it. If you want to join this list, click the join button below and see all the cool perks and rewards you can get in the videos, in the live streams, and of course, in the Discord. So, I will see you guys next Monday, where, again, I don't know if it's going to be either a Fortis Colosseum tip guide or a Perilous Moons uh, extremely detailed guide so I can tell you how to get through everything, even if it's preparation and everything you need to know. For now, I hope you guys enjoy Valamore, have a wonderful week, and I will see you in the next one. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace!